science in pajamas. All right, so welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to do a decision matrix, also known as a pug chart, during the experimental design process. Sorry, engineering design process. Engineering design process. I apologize for that. So let's say we're trying to figure out and create a better water filtration system. All right. During the course of um, figuring out my problem, delimiting it, and brainstorming, I came up with three possible design solutions for my new water filtration system. So design one, design two, and design three. Now the criteria that is important for me with this water filtration system, I have right here. So the four criteria that I felt were most important when I delimited my problem was safety, reliability, cost, and aesthetics. So aesthetics is, you know, is it appealing to the eye or does it just look like garbage? Now I also assign them weights. The weight just simply means, you know, their importance to me. So although all four of these criteria are important to me, some of them I feel are more important than others. For instance, safety should be the most important factor in terms of deciding which of these solutions, which of these designs would be the best solution. So I gave it a higher weight of five. Reliability is next with a weight of four. Cost is a weight of two. You know, it's good if it's cost effective and not too expensive, but if it is the absolute best at filtering out virus, bacteria, unwanted minerals and chemicals from the water system, then you know, people might be willing to pay a little bit more. And aesthetics, that's the least important. Even if it looks like crap, if it works awesome, then you know what, that's what's important. All right, so how we do this now <clears throat> is <clears throat> I'm going to go through and give each one of these an initial score. So I'm gonna give design one an initial score for all these criteria. So let's see. On a scale of one to five, I felt that this one had a four for safety. I felt that it had a two for reliability, it had a one for cost, and a one for aesthetics. So far so good? All right, so I'm trying to avoid the light. For design two, I look at this idea and I go through and give it an initial score for each criteria. Well, this one only got a one for safety. Again, out of a score of one to five. But it got a three for reliability. It got a two for cost. And just a one for aesthetics. With design three, it was super safe. I'm going to give it the highest initial score of a five out of five. Reliability was also really good. Cost, yeah, had one. But this one looked the worst out of all of them, so I'm gonna give it a zero for aesthetics. Now what we wanna do at this point is, these were just initial scores. But remember, we said that these criteria, some of them we consider more important than others, and that's where the weights come in what we are going to do is multiply our initial score by the weight of that category. So design one had an initial score of four for safety. So four times a weight of five gives us 20. For design two, one initial score of one times a weight of five is five. And design three got a five times a weight of five, which is 25. Not too bad, right? All right, reliability had a weight of four. So two times four is eight. 
3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. All right. Cost had a weight of 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. All right. 1 times 1 for aesthetics is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 0 times 1 is 0. Now the reason why we want to do this, why we want to multiply our initial score by the weight is so that we can reflect the fact that some things are more important and thus should have a larger impact on the overall score. So since safety, we value that as the most important factor, it has the highest weight. So that means that when we multiply the weighted value of five times the initial score, it's reflected in the, or times the initial score to get the weighted score. It shows that we put more value on it. So that's why it has a higher score here because it is so important we want to make sure in terms of the total points that the more important things are going to have the higher ratio i guess all right the higher effect so now to find the total points we want to add up all of the weighted scores so 20 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1 so that's 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 20 is 30, plus 1 is 31. All right. So now we have 12 plus 5. Oh, wait, wait, here we go. 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 5 is 10, 10 plus 12 is 22. All right. So 25 plus 16 would be 41. 41 plus 2 is 43 plus zero is still 43. So by looking at these total scores, it gives us an idea of which one is likely to be our best design. And if we look, design three has the highest value, the highest total points of 43. So even though it scored low in these bottom two categories, the cost and aesthetics, it scored high in things that mean the most to us, which is why they have the highest value of weight and why it's reflected in the weighted score. So that when we add up the total points, we can see not just our initial scores, but we can also see how the weights, so the importance is reflected by giving us this number instead of 10. We can also see that this one did not do well at all. So design two is definitely the worst solution. Design one, meh, kind of mid-range, but definitely from this value, design three would be our likely solution that we would want to now take to the next level. Build and test a model, do an analysis, try a prototype, and keep going from there. All right, so I hope this helps you to figure out how to do, fill in a pug chart appropriately and how to look at it and analyze it. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps. Otherwise, stay awesome, stay safe, and I will talk to you guys next time. All right, bye-bye.